In this video, we're going to compute the derivative of the function x squared times e to the x all over 7x minus 9. And we're going to take that derivative with respect to x right here. So you'll notice the first thing when you look at this function, it's a quotient function. That is, we have x squared times e to the x divided by 7x minus 9. So when we calculate the derivative of this thing, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So remember, our high function, the numerator is x squared times e to the x. Our low function, is, the denominator, is 7x minus 9. So we're going to get low d high, take the derivative of x squared times e to the x, minus high d low, so take the derivative of 7x minus 9, square the bottom, here we go. It's our little rhyme we say every time we do the quotient rule. And so using the quotient rule, we get that derivative. So there's some things that have to be calculated a little bit more, right? So when you look at 7x minus 9, we have to take its derivative. That's not so bad. It's, it's a polynomial function. It's just a linear function, in fact. Its derivative will be its slope, which is 7. On the other hand, you have the, to take also the derivative of x squared times e to the x, for which that derivative will unavoidably require the product rule. And so we see in this example that sometimes you have to combine various derivative rules to calculate the derivative of a function. This one, we have to combine the product rule with the quotient rule here. We use the quotient rule first. Now we're going to use the product rule on x squared times e to the x. So we have 7x minus 9. We take the derivative of x squared e to the x. So what is that going to look like? Well, by the product rule, we're going to take the derivative of x squared, which of course we know to be 2x. Then we multiply that by e to the x. Then we're going to add to that x squared times the derivative of e to the x, which we know the derivative of e to the x is in fact just e to the x itself. So we can drop that down. We still have the minus x squared e to the x. And like I said a moment ago, when you take the derivative of the polynomial of the linear function, I should say, the derivative will just be its slope. So we get a 7 right there. This all sits above the 7x minus 9 squared. All right, don't be tempted to cancel out this 7x minus 9 with any on the denominator. That's not valid because the only way we could cancel 7x minus 9 from the denominator is if the entire numerator were divisible by 7x minus 9, for which this has no 7x minus 9 factor to contribute. So don't fall into that temptation. Um, instead, I suppose we can distribute things and and. and start combining. It is a good idea to try to factor your derivatives because uh, that'll be very useful in future applications. So some things I can notice, there are some common divisors that could factor out. Like notice everything is divisible by e to the x. We could factor that out. Um, we also can afford to take out an x away from everything. And so upon doing so, we factor out this, uh, we factor out of, out of everything, this x times e to the x. That then leaves behind we have the 7x minus 9. We haven't multiplied that through yet. Um, with the 2x e to the x, we took away the x and the e to the x, so that's left behind a 2. Um, with the x squared times e to the x, we took away an x e to the x, that leaves behind an x, like so. And then for the other piece, again, we took away an x and an e to the x, so we have negative 7 right here. This all sits above the 7x minus 9 squared. So we took out the x, e, the x. Those are good common factors. There's really not much else to do in the numerator in terms of factorization. So we're going to have to multiply that thing out. Uh, to do that, we're going to take the 7x minus 9 and FOIL it with the 2 plus x. So that will give us a 14x plus 7x squared minus 18 minus 9x. There's also a negative 7x in the numerator. So let's combine like terms. We have the x, e to the x already factored out. So in terms of the x squares, there's only the 7x squared. Um, in terms of the x's, we have a 14x, take away a 7x, that will be 7x itself, then take away another 9x, that should leave us with a negative 2x. And then lastly, there's a constant of negative 18, like so. And then we have our factored function right here. Now, if we didn't factor out the x, e to the x from the beginning, we could have done that later on. There's been a factor of x, e to the x everywhere. It's usually better to uh, factor things out before you expand if there is, of course, a common denominator there. You might not see it until the end, so that's okay if you didn't see that. Now, if I were trying to simplify this a little bit more, it would be curious to know if there's a common factor on top and bottom. The denominator has the 7x minus 9 squared. Um, in the numerator, the 7x squared minus 2x minus 18, is there any way of factoring that? 
uh, to cancel out the 7x minus 9. And with a little bit of guess and check, you'll see it's not going to happen. Uh, if you take 7 times negative 18, there's not going to be any factors of that that add up to be negative 2. Uh, or you could also check with the discriminant for the quadratic form, and you'll see it's not a perfect square. So this thing is factored, can't simplify it anymore. So this would be the great, this would be probably the best form we could write the derivative in this situation where we needed both the quotient rule and the product rule.